Trying to develop our knowledge and understanding is perhaps one of the most human things there is. We are constantly attempting to broaden our horizons and make new discoveries. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we will take a look at three recent scientific breakthroughs. Mars may have natural shelters from radiation. Elon Musk stated confidently that his company SpaceX will send an unmanned mission to Mars in the next two years, and that he believes humans will land on Mars by the year 2026. But getting to Mars is only part of the battle. There is also the massive logistical and technological issue of returning to Earth, not to mention merely surviving the harsh Martian landscape. Unlike Earth, Mars does not have a magnetic shield or atmosphere to protect would-be travelers from the deadly onslaught of cosmic radiation. And without any artificial protection set up on Mars, how will the first arrivals deal with this issue? One solution would be to send teams of robots to construct structures which would protect humans from radiation. But there may be a less costly, less hands-on solution. Butts are towers of rock characteristic to the southwestern United States and common to parts of the Martian landscape. A study published in Geophysical Research Papers found that these butts may protect against solar radiation and create an ideal oasis for the first humans arriving on Mars. The Mars Science Laboratory Curiosity rover was sent to Mars in 2012 with an instrument called a Radiation Assessment Detector used to detect levels of radiation from the Sun. As Curiosity roamed across an area of Mars called the Murray Butts region, it found a significant drop in surface radiation due to the natural barrier the butt creates. This doesn't mean that humans will merely be able to land a craft behind a butt and start exploring, but it does give scientists a better understanding of where the optimal areas would be to construct some kind of permanent Martian base. Elon Musk's prediction may be aggressive, but the goal is not out of reach. Seven hundred year old toilets discovered. In 2014, archaeologists had the fortune, or perhaps in some other people's perspectives, the misfortune of unearthing not one, but two seven hundred year old toilets. With some deep introspection, archaeologists estimated that the toilets date back to the 14th century. The lavatories were found along Funen Island in Denmark. The lavatories do not resemble modern-day toilets by any means, which is expected. Rather, they take on the appearance of what appears to have been large barrels. Based off some inscriptions and residue, archaeologists have been able to form the conclusion that the barrels were not solely used as toilets. Rather, they had served another purpose prior to being transformed into a toilet. Some food residue was detected that indicates that the barrels were once used as a means of storing or transporting goods. Considering that the finds date back to the 14th century, the condition of the waste left behind in this toilet still gave off a very foul smell. However, in the archaeologists' eyes, this find was amazing, as it sheds light into the diets and lifestyles of Danish people at the time. Scientists discover an ocean 400 miles beneath our feet that could fill our oceans three times over. I am sure plenty of us are familiar with the water cycle from school. It rains, the water collects in rivers, oceans and the like, the precipitation evaporates, condenses to form clouds, to then rain again. However, scientists have long theorized that the water cycle is not quite as simple as primary school taught us, and for decades, there have been theories and speculation among scientists that within the Earth's structure, there is some source of water playing an underground role in what has been named a whole Earth water cycle. In 2014, research placed us one step closer to proving this theory right and finding out just how this could work. The structure of the Earth is composed of distinct parts, the crust, the hard rock exterior to our planet, the upper mantle, then the lower mantle, two near-liquid layers of Earth made of molten rock, the outer core, a liquid part of the Earth's core, and the inner core, the solid center to our planet that sometimes reaches a staggering 5,500 degrees Celsius. In 2014, 
the search was over, and scientists reported their success in discovering a large reservoir of water within the area being referred to as the transition zone, meaning the division between the upper and the lower mantle. This underground water source is so large, it has been said that with that volume of water, we could fill all of the Earth's oceans three times. This study, conducted by a number of scientists, perhaps most notably geophysicists throughout the United States, used data collected from the US Array to support their hypotheses and conduct further research into the water inside our planet. The US Array is a collection of hundreds of seismographs from various locations throughout the USA. Seismographs are used to record the movements of the ground and are most commonly used to anticipate and record earthquakes, hence the established network of them. These scientists used the data from a number of national seismographs over numerous years and conducted a series of complex calculations to try and draw conclusions from the movements within the Earth's mantle and core. Based on the data at hand, these scientists believe that they have found the huge water reserve in between the upper and lower mantle, between 250 and 410 miles below the surface of the Earth. Unfortunately, at that depth of the Earth, the science becomes more complex than simply plowing ahead on an excavation to see if it really is there after all. The deepest a human has been able to dig into the Earth is 12 kilometers, an estimated halfway through the crust, with the mission grinding to a halt because the drill bit was melted by geothermal energy. It goes without saying that 7.5 miles is nothing compared to 410, and we are a long way off being able to confirm exactly what is happening down there. The theory that has stemmed from this research and in many ways simultaneously facilitated it is as follows. Many believe that the Earth's mantle contains ringwood light, a mineral that, when under extreme pressure, is capable of trapping water. Based on the measurements cited in the US array, it appears as though convection pushes the ringwoodite further into the mantle, resulting in an increase in pressure which then pushes the water trapped within the ringwoodite out, a process called dehydration melting. So far, this is the extent of the research. The geology of inner Earth is a slow field of study. It can take years of data collection before any of it is remotely useful, meaning we may be waiting a little while longer for thorough answers. The real-life application of this fascinating deep Earth geology research is monumental. If the ringwood light contains just 2.6% water, that would fill Earth's oceans three times, and the real figure could be a great deal more. If we were somehow able to access this resource, the impact for us would be phenomenal. Though for now, we must continue to preserve and look after our freshwater reserves. Science is a long way away from assessing this just yet. This also challenges a number of existing theories. Prior to this discovery, the accepted understanding was that water had arrived on Earth as a result of icy comets. Though this research could suggest that the water on the surface, accessible to us on Earth, somehow came from the mantle transition zone instead. If so, could we access it again? In the long term, using the insides of Earth to inform us, be it with data from seismographs or studying tectonic plates, could allow us to predict the weather, changes in sea levels, earthquakes and climate change disasters far more accurately, allowing us to tackle these issues head on. The water inside the Earth presents new challenges, theories and opportunities. But what do you make of these interesting discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comments section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.